Howdy, folks. Um, well, this is interesting. This is technically my first B-Sides, uh, Las Vegas at least, so um, nice to see everybody. Um, of course, like you see, we're going to go ahead and talk about AI and disinformation campaigns today. A uh, quick disclaimer, this talk will have political stuff. Duh. Um, oh, my God. Gosh, you can't do that in a talk. I don't make any statement about my own personal views or whatever in this. Um, the other thing is that there's going to be a very short section speaking about non-consensual image generation. Not graphic, not explicit. There will be a warning. All right. Let's get started. So, yeah. Howdy, folks. Um, that would be me. Uh, if you see any of those, those little stickers around Con, those are mine. And they're now going to be yours. You can pick them up. Um, I, uh, I love animals, all forms of fiber arts. I raise fiber rabbits and goats. Um, I run the Maine Lock Picking Meetup right now, so if you're ever in Maine, come say hi. You can get the uh, from here. And uh, yeah, you can also come up to me after for some stickers and stuff if we have time. Uh, I've got some little 3D printed bunnies too. All right. So that being said, uh, this idea came from an offhand discussion with a friend on AI and disinformation. Uh, we chatted a bit about how much crap is flying around the internet that's just generated. It's just there. It's an absolute swarm of content. It's difficult to see through. In many ways, it is cyclical, though. As with any new technology, the initial tidal wave comes with trials and tribulations of cross boundaries, uh, ethical concerns, application, proof of concepts. You know the deal. Uh, so that's where this talk was born. We'll go a little bit into some common tools for each generative technology, how it's done on a high level, and some examples of it being used in disinformation campaigns. Um, we'll also talk a little bit on the long-term effects of these campaigns, because there are actually some, and there's a lot more than you might think. Um, and then finally, what you can do about it. I'm a very strong believer in talks with a call to action. Uh, otherwise, I've given you a problem and not a solution. Uh, this is by no means exhaustive. Uh, it might not contain your favorite tools and tricks. Uh, most of these are going to be versions that are more user friendly so that people can just kind of get into them, some that are going to be web based, etc. Um, and I'd be remiss in not pointing out Pope Drip over here. Uh, some of you probably recognize this. This image came out and it was passed around with a lot of folks inventing their own narrative for it. Um, it was created in Midjourney, uh, posted on Reddit, and Lots of people started posting it as if it was a real image and commenting on it as if it was a real image. So very good representation of the talk to come. OK, differentiating these is not going to be what the talk at hand is actually going to be about today. Not 100%, but let's get this out of the way. Uh, artificial intelligence is a set of technologies that enables computers to perform a variety of advanced functions. Think your OCRs, et cetera. Um, it's technically more of a concept. It's not a direct application of the concept. Machine learning is a subset of AI. It's a subset. This is more the application of AI concepts into very specific pieces, right? So feeding in data and having it averaged in a, into a training result or whatever. All right, so let's get started on audio and video deepfakes. Audio deepfakes use multiple iterations over very large quantities of data to train their output. Things like accent, tone, speaking styles, and emotions can even be introduced into the model, which is shaped over time. As with all AI and machine learning applications, this gets better over time and with more hands-on management of training data, so you make sure there's no crap getting in there. Um, think of it like carving a mold. One that you've taken five minutes to carve won't be as fine and accurate as one that you've taken 50 minutes to carve. And the final result of your mold is going to look a little bit better. So RNNs, recurrent neural networks, and CNNs, concurrent neural networks, are two types of generation. They have the equivalent of memory and analyze sequential data, one after another in the case of recurrent, like text and videos, and spatial data, which is more in-depth analysis of a single object or conceptual design, as in with convolutional and with image generation. Uh, deepfakes currently run into a lot of problems that we use to identify them by. Usually this is stuff like weird background noise, mismatched features, confusing dimensions, uh, or even just general problems with sequencing in the case of RNNs or videos. 
Now, we have some tools here that are commonly used in this sort of generation. These slides will be available on my site um, and presumably on the conference site soon. I think they said that. I'm not going to play this. It's too long. Um, so long story short, that is an impressionist who's doing, are you kidding me? There. That is an impressionist who is doing his impressions as his face is changing, as he's adding on deep fake, you know. Um, it's not good. Are you kidding me? What is going on? Okay. No, it's just loading. Um, so it's not disinformation, though. Uh, it's a performance, and it's a pretty darn good one at that. Uh, here we are on the strip in Vegas. We're surrounded by lookalikes, some of them good, some of them really not. Uh, what's the difference? What makes disinformation? It's partially context. Uh, if we don't have control over context and narrative, things start to spiral out of control almost immediately. It used to be that talking the talk and acting the part was the way that you were able to get information across. If you faked it, you made it. Uh, nowadays, there are a lot of ways to control a narrative in addition to that, using fake accounts to support your own views, acting like you're in a different position than you are when you're making claims, and of course, the creation of convincing media that applies directly towards your own goals. Now, this video is a great way to showcase the capabilities of generative technologies and how seamless they can sometimes be. Um, in parts of this video, if you go online afterwards and watch it, um, you'll see that there's some tiny mistakes, problems with clipping, but usually stuff like this and any deep fake is, is not going to be super noticeable. It's not going to be super easy to find. So let's get the elephant in the room out of the way immediately, which is elections. When I started drafting this talk a year and a half ago, I didn't expect that things would move this rapidly, but here we are. Uh, you may have seen some discussion on the use of generative technology in robocalls or similar. If you haven't, that's one of the things we'll be looking at briefly. Um, so attached to this is a clip of the New Hampshire audio. Uh, so some of you will recognize this, but there was audio sent to New Hampshire voters, voters in the form of robocalls. Um, long story short, it was supposed to be Biden saying, don't, don't vote, just don't vote. Don't vote, don't worry about it. Um, and if you hear this, some of you will be thinking, well, that sounds like garbage. Uh, obviously, it's fake. It doesn't sound 100% right. It sounds lilted and funky. But that's not the point. Um, as some of the social engineers in the room may know, it doesn't take perfection. It doesn't take pure believability. Usually, all it takes for information like this to be the intended action is the right scenario. A robocall during a fevered election targeted at voters won't catch everyone, but it will catch some people, and it did. Um, Eleven Labs voice, voice cloning software was used for that sample. Most of the tools used in this presentation and for these samples you'll find are extremely easy to find or use, many of them being free, cheap, open source, available in a web browser. Okay, so here's the other problem. Determining fakes is still difficult. Some of the factors used in determinations can also be seen in untampered media. Uh, as a result, we've been seeing cases of real videos being claimed as deep fakes. Uh, this causes other problems with court proceedings getting stopped up or the line otherwise being blurry. An example of this was when Elon Musk went on stage at a Los Angeles tech conference and claimed self-driving capabilities for certain models of Tesla cars in 2016. There weren't those capabilities. So Tesla later rebutted these claims as being deep faked footage, something that did not amuse the judge as much as I think they wanted it to. And that isn't even the first instance. Uh, the defense in a capital riot case attempted to discount prosecution arguments by pointing to video and image evidence claiming that they had been altered and referencing offhand to the possibility of them being deep, deep faked. So with that being said, let's get a little bit more into generative text. This has been around a lot longer than some of the previous stuff and had a history of being just a neat thing to play with. But it always had problems with memory and the ability to keep up a conversation. With modern LLMs, better data sets, more money to throw at the problem, uh, generative text has become an extremely useful tool for a lot of applications, including disinformation. These are built on data sets and work by calculating frequency or likelihood of characters. 
Uh, it's why it can be so easy to algorithmically pick up on if you calculate the likelihood of the next characters, words, sentences, then you can easily figure out how likely it is to be from a machine. It also suffers from feedback loops of ingesting its own creations, causing way higher frequency of some words than is actually normal. Okay, let's talk about an example that some of you may have seen and that may re raise a few more flags for the way that this technology can be used in disinformation campaigns. There's hallucinations, of course. You may have searched something in your browser only to find a ridiculous claim being bumped on to the top of the search, like the idea that Kenya does not exist in Africa and does not start with a K sound, but in fact is spelled with a K sound. That's not all though. While hallucinations that drag up confusing results and features to the top are bad, even worse is AI gaining liability for its generations, like in a defamation case uh, from Mark Walters against open AI for false and harmful information about him embezzling money. There are also dumb applications of generated text, like the lawyer who used fake citations generated by ChatGPT in an actual court case. But worst are the intentionally sneaky ones, like fake websites being generated by Russian influence networks or the potential for its use in fake product reviews. These things have actual effects on politics, on industry, on law, and general social trust in ways that we may not be able to measure given their current widespread and hidden nature. Okay, with that, here comes our warning about non-consensual sexual materials. If this is something you don't want to hear, I suggest you leave. Uh, it isn't explicit. It isn't anything particularly big or graphic, but it can be upsetting. So image models tend to utilize diffusion. This is a probabilistic generative model that makes use of noise injections and learnable transformations to generate realistic images from random noise. Generative images commonly have problems averaging backgrounds and tiny details outside of the focus of the image. Images that are given greater iterations on diffusion models tend to not have this problem as badly, but things like image format, focus, connection of object image, uh, edges, and color or lighting inconsistencies are really, really common problems, as some of you may know. So now we're going to get on to the Internet's favorite thing and I'm not talking about Taylor Swift, but I also am. So this is a very specific set of incidents that tangentially involve Taylor Swift. Some of you may remember that in January of this year, uh, there was a massive onslaught of not safe for work images that were going on to Twitter slash X, and unsurprisingly, these were generated. While at this point, most tools have some basic safeguards to try and prevent this type of generation, users were quick to do what they do best, which is circumvent every single attempt to contain them. Thankfully for Taylor, she's got enough of a following that it's really easy to dismiss these photos and say, duh, of course that's fake. But what about everybody else? What about your average Joe? For those working in jobs that are significantly less forgiving, one errant allegation can destroy an entire career or an entire life. A creator offered on Discord to make a five minute deep fake of what's known as a personal girl, meaning anybody with fewer than two million Instagram followers. The amount that they were requesting for this was $65. This concept unfortunately doesn't stop there either. Back in May, a man was arrested for possession of thousands of generated images of child sexual abuse material and he was even sending these images to children. One of the problems that comes from this isn't just the material itself. It's the training material that had to be used to create these images. That means that random scraped photos of children were used in the non-consensual creation of child pornography. And in the case of any generated images, many of the materials used in training data were likely used without full permission of the creators or uploaders sometimes no permission at all. So now that that's over with. In March of 2023, an image was widely shared across the internet of smoke billowing from the Pentagon. Of course, as the title of this talk would suggest, it wasn't real. 
Uh, but even so, it was shared by numerous news outlets, including Russia Today and a faux Bloomberg account on Twitter. And yes, there are a lot of those. Um, reports of an explosion near the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. was the headline. Now, in and of itself, that seems like it wouldn't be all that concerning, but the timing of the images released perfectly matched with the opening bell of the stock market, causing a 0.3% plummet in the S&P 500. Gold prices climbed briefly, general panic ensued. And yet, here we are today. No Pentagon issues, a mostly recovered if otherwise generally not very good stock market. Larger surveys have been finding that this phenomenon of political and market effects from generated images was worst post-2016, and that elections seem to cause a surge in popular use. Go figure. Humans inherently want to believe and talk about things that feel larger than life, that surprise them, or that invoke a ton of other emotions. It's why rage bait is a thing, or doom scrolling. We pick out errant behavior from normal patterns, which leads me to the next part of this talk. Don't panic. This isn't the end of the world. While it's really lame that we have to do this, we have to be thoughtful of the things we choose to share and review. Interactions and engagement empower all disinformation campaigns, not just AI-based ones. With that, trust-based processing and emotional consciousness are important. Ask yourself, who's promoting this? Why? How do I feel about this? Are there any indicators of deception? We inherently desire for things that feel good or agree with our views to be the truth. And that desire for the truth should be something that we train ourselves to acknowledge and maintain a healthy skepticism towards. So something that you can do is use resources available to you, like the AI incident database or the True Media Project. Contribute by adding entries of observed activity to these projects. You can also create an ethical no ethical proof of concept. It, it's already quite easy. A lot of people do it. But show people how easy it is to make generated content that's believable and ensure that you have the follow through to properly educate them on it. Legal efforts are also starting to gain traction. For instance, the Federal Election Commission held a procedural vote that's received a lot of petitions against the use of generative media in election campaigns. This is a great step forward. It's a show of awareness and an active attempt to do something about it. And the final thing you can do is teach friends and family how to identify generated technologies and how dangerous they can actually be. I know, it's easier said than done. One day, though, we may see a time when a generated piece of media causes irreparable damage to larger society, not just in a single incident or a small group of people. That's already bad enough. So let's mitigate or avoid that as much as possible. Questions? Anyone? It's pretty similar. Yeah, so the question was, is the incident database uh, kind of similar to Snopes, but for disinformation and AI? And yeah, it is. There's even a tag that you can sort by that is disinformation. Uh, start over here. So the question is, is there any technology out there that can help identify deep fakes? Um, and the answer is yes, there are a few. Um, more of the commercial options are gaining ground than the open source ones. I didn't really find all that many good open source ones. Um, but yeah, they're out there. Um, so we should start seeing more of those soon. So the question. Oh, I gotcha. Uh, so the question is, how did you get interested in this? And it's just, it's fascinating to me. I started in forensics, so I have an inherent desire to kind of look at things that are doing bad. <laughs> um, and I think we have time for one more. So. What is the acronym POC that you use? Oh, acronym POC, uh, proof of concept, basically just showing that you can do it. Yes, you will. So I have these slides already up on my website. Um, 
my website is, well, my Twitter handle, wait, do I have it on here? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I think, I think I have it on there. There it is. Uh, so I posted it on Twitter as well, but it's also on my website, which is that there is the domain for it. So, um, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate it.